Hey everybody, Happy Tuesday, it's Tom, uh, sitting out on the porch on a nice cool morning. Uh, so we're in September celebrating National Kinship Caregiver Month. Uh, we are celebrating the fact that uh, nationwide about 4% of all children, about 2.6 million children, are in kinship caregiver relationships where uh, an extended member of their family has taken them in and is really surrounding them with the love and the stability and the care they need because a parent is not able to give that care. Uh, we're celebrating here at DFACS by, in many ways, but in one way is by doing some webinars for our kinship caregivers. Last week we had a webinar on traumatic stress because we know that many of the children who are in kinship caregiver arrangements uh, have experienced some kind of trauma. This month, or this week rather, excuse me, on Thursday we're having a webinar about uh, to help our kinship uh, caregivers navigate the court system. We'll have a probate court judge and a juvenile court judge and some of our lawyers talk about uh, the, really the court system and, and, and uh, how it can help us uh, to get permanency for these children and ensure that they will have a, a permanent attachment to their family either through guardianship or adoption or, or some other uh, stable arrangement. Um, we're also celebrating this month our own employees who are or have been kinship caregivers, and our featured employee this uh, week is Ms. Electra Evans. Um, she, as you'll see from the picture, she has uh, several of her niece's children in her care and, in fact, is, has adopted and is in the process of adopting uh, several of her niece's children. Uh, unfortunately, they came to her in a, a tragic way. Uh, her niece was murdered, and... Uh, but she stepped up to the plate to give these children the stability uh, and the care and the love that they needed, especially following this traumatic situation. And I want to quote what she says. She says, I advocate for kinship care and honestly believe that children flourish more when they are with relatives. It's been a challenge for our entire family and definitely for my niece's 14-year-old son because he witnessed his work, m mother's murder. Still, with love, support, and consistency in our home, he is in a much better place socially, emotionally, and academically. So Ms. Evans, thank you for doing that. Thank you for stepping up to the plate. Um, thank you to all of those who, uh, in that extended family, who are coming in and giving children the care and the love and the stability they need when parents are not there to do it or can't do it for some reason. Uh, so we'll continue to celebrate that the rest of the month. And just want to thank all of you, and especially you, Ms. Evans, for, for uh, taking on that responsibility on top of uh, all of your other responsibilities in life. For more information, uh, please email our uh, kinshipnavigator.program at dhs.ga.gov. If you need some help, on, uh, if you want to watch the webinar or if you want some more information about our kinship program. I'd also like to highlight uh, this week, um, try to highlight things that are going on that are innovative around the state. We have uh, 159 counties, 14 different DFACS regions, and we love to see it when our regions and our counties come up with great and new innovative ideas. And I want to highlight what's going on in Region 3. So Andrew Rendeck, the C3 coordinator in Region 3, has created a Spotlight News Weekly email blast for, for, for the region social services staff. And that includes, um, includes like updates on the Child and Family Services Review, uh, sort of tips on how to really engage with families, um, really using critical thinking skills in the work. Region 3 is also has, a, uh, I believe, a monthly stakeholder series in which they're bringing in some of our partners, uh, police, school social workers, providers, to talk about issues of, of common interest. Um, and so that's the way that we can uh, be innovative, can be creative in our work, and, of course, through the stakeholder series and events like that, we can also develop those relationships with others that are so critical to helping us uh, protect uh, Georgia's children and serve Georgia's families. Uh, let's talk a little bit about OFI. We know we have the PEBT program going on. Um, we have already issued about, I think, $194.2 million in PEBT benefits uh, since July to uh, to replace those uh, those funds that, that families had to spend because their children who would have getting, been getting free and reduced lunch were not able to get that because the schools were closed. 
Unfortunately, we still have about, uh, I think, let's see, we have about 30% of the 1.1 million eligible children whose families still have not claimed that benefit through our online portal, which uh, Ramirez will put the link to here. Um, and so what are we going to do about that? Well, we are, uh, before the end of the month, because the federal deadline for getting these funds out is September 30th. So before the end of the month, for those families that have not claimed the benefit, we are going to use the information that we have and send EBT cards to the files, to the addresses we have on file for those children. We, of course, it's not our preferred way of doing it. We really want folks to go on to the, to the uh, website, uh, we'll put the link on here again, and we want you to claim your benefits so we know that which child is in your home and we make sure we have the right address and we can get those benef that benefit card to you. Um, because we are, feel like we need to get all of these benefits out by the end of the month, though, we're actually backing the deadline for you to claim the benefit to make sure it goes to your address to September 18th. That's a change from September 25th. So if you want to make sure the benefit card goes to the right address, please make your claim by September 18th because we need that additional time to then compile all of the, the information we have uh, for the children who, whose families have not claimed the benefit and then get those cards out before the end of the month. Um, so I know this is a, a change, but it is really part of a larger effort to make sure that we get the, all of these benefits out to Georgia's families before the federal deadline. Um, continue to want to thank, or, or want to con thank continually, our uh, OFI staff, our uh, numbers are looking great, especially for folks in, uh, who are doing age, blind, and disabled, or ABD Medicaid. Uh, your timeliness hit 94.55% this past week, um, half less than a point shy of having every program hit the agency goal of over 95% timeliness. So thanks for all you're doing. And thank you to all of you who, uh, who work with us. Uh, thank you for all of you who work um, for our agency or with our agency and for all you do for the families of Georgia. And we'll see you all next week. Bye.